I'm so excited. We're bringing you someone who's so good. She's a great authoress. And the movie that it's based on, she wrote the books. We're talking to Robin Jones Gunn next. This is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. <laughs> Hello, you guys. Welcome to Book Circle Online. I am one of your hosts, James Lodge Jr. I'm so glad to see you guys joined us today. We have a great author for you today. But first, my co-host, my girl, my fellow Hardy, Marissa <laughs> Serafini. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes, I am Marissa. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. That's right, Serafini <laughs> TV. That's where you can follow her at. Yes. <laughs> We're so excited to have this guest because if any of you guys watched the movie Finding Father Christmas, which was the highest rated, most watched movie on Hallmark Mystery Movie Channels, did I say it right? Did I say it right? Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Mysteries and Mysteries. Yeah. I, so I knew my team. It was so close. so close. But I mean, either way, very good stuff. So good. And these books that they come from are really, really good. And they're really great reads. The books are Finding Father Christmas and Engaging Father Christmas. And is there more Father Christmas coming after yeah. that? Yes. Okay, oh, very excited about all that. Geez. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Robin Jones Gunn. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's all your audience here. Everybody down, down, down. <laughs> She's a regular person. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Marissa and I are very happy to have you here. We're so excited to have yes, you here. Yes, I, I was, because obviously we follow Hallmark. We're, yes. we're big yes. fans of Hallmark. Yes. And I knew about this movie when they were filming it back in June yep. of 2016. Yeah, she about to it. To put yeah. a time stamp on this show. But like, I knew that it was based on your book. And I'm like, okay, we have to get her in. Mm -hmm. So this has been mm -hmm. a long time coming. So I'm yep. so glad yeah, you're yes. here today. Yes. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I'm <laughs> pleased to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Yes, of Very course. Nice. Now, I mean, now you wrote these books, uh, you know, a while back, and now they were made, one was made into a movie. Mm -hmm. So basically, I mean, it, it seems like the movie was a combination of the books. First two. <laughs> first two? <laughs> yes, and this is what happened. I wrote the first book 11 years ago. Wow. And so many readers were sending me emails, this would make a great Hallmark movie. So I talked to my agent and she said, oh, it's so hard and there's just so many people that want their book to be made yes. into a Hallmark movie and I'm sure. we'll see what happens. So five years ago, a Hallmark producer contacted my agent and said, do you have any Christmas books what? that we can make yeah. into a movie? She goes, oh yes, I do. Yeah. In the meantime, I had written the second one, mm -hmm. Engaging Father Christmas. Yeah. And so when the producer from Hallmark read the first one, they said, oh, we need more of a love story. And my agent said, oh, Engaging Father Christmas, mm. you need to read this and combine the stories. Yeah. So then it took five years from the time that wow. they started the conversations to it actually coming on air. Wow. That was a happy day when well, that all I'm happened. I'm sure, you could breathe too. Oh. Sure. Yeah, yeah, because you know, I was reading the first book, Finding Father mm -hmm. Christmas, and I realized mm -hmm. there really wasn't a love interest in the first no. one. Right. No. And to be a Hallmark movie, you kind of have to have a <sighs> love yes. interest. There's True. always the pair. I'm like, uh, so I completely understood why yeah. it covered both of those books. Instead it of made sense. One. It completely made sense now, because Hallmark has, their, has a formula um, but with your book and with the movie, it was just so it was so good. First of all, the movie was really good. The books are really nice. engaging. Um, the books they're not they're not a lot of pages, so it's good. You can read them. You can go on a plane. You can be at the beach. I read I, I, the I, first book on a plane to Vancouver, yeah. and I read the second book on the way exactly. back. Nice. I did. So I'm saying for Very folks good. out there, it's it's great. It's great quick reading. It's such it's so it's so good. So because things keep happening to you, you want to find what happens next, and this happens next, and then she does this. It's like you want to know what's going on. Yeah. It's so it's That so means exciting. I did my job, right? You did your job. As a writer, you <laughs> yeah. did your job, yeah. exactly. Um, and she also has this little segue, how my book became a movie. And this is something, because uh, we're going to talk a little more about that later on in the show, just how this actually works. She gave you a little piece just now, how it works. It's five years in the making. Yeah. But this is a great little book. It's out for people who are wanting, who have something, have something out there you want to maybe get produced. It shows you how, how she went, what she went through. Different for everybody, yeah. Different for everybody. And all the proceeds go to? To Lit World, which is training for writers who live in difficult places in the world where wow. they can't get the training or the schooling. Yeah. And it's a an organization that's very dear to my heart. And I've gone around oh, the world good. and done training at the Lit World conferences. Wow. And those writers are so talented, but they need that scholarship to be able to get there and yeah. get that training. And, yeah. That's so admirable yeah. because yeah. not a lot of people do that. No. Because people are just trying to figure out how to either make a movie or just make a book and, and get that published. Mm -hmm. So to have that knowledge and out into the world. Yeah, but look at, look at what we ha we have so yeah. much. 
And yeah. what if what if you had all the talent you had, but you lived in a place where it was difficult to get the kind of job that would mm-hmm. use those skills? Mm-hmm. So to be able to get the training to be able to develop and use those skills in places that are really difficult to break in mm-hmm. is is producing now in all over the world literature and films that are coming from the heart language of the people in that community instead of taking all the books in English and just translating them. So that's why I'm really passionate about it. I feel like you're also... Elevate that culture. You're giving hope too. Yes, Mm. yes. And so it's Lit World. You guys are giving hope to people who may be in some remote remote village somewhere who they're good writers thinking, well, how do I get this out to anybody? How's going to see it? That's what it's amazing. I agree with Marissa. It's it's amazing stuff. Um, And before we get into the books a little bit, we want to talk a little bit about you. Okay. And something comes up that I'm a professional organizer by trade. So there's something that that both Marissa and I both caught that we want to bring up with you that I think is very interesting is that when you first started writing, Mm -hmm. when people say, I don't have time to write. (laughs) I I, I don't know. I would love to do it, but I just don't know when I can, like, when can I write? What do you say to them? (laughs) Well... I started writing when we had two young children at home Mm -hmm. and there was no time. And I actually read a book by C.S. Lewis called Letters to an American Lady. And she said, how do you get all this personal correspondence done with teaching and writing? And he said something like, "Um, I rise while it is still dark. I love the still dewy cobwebbed hours of the morning. I make a proper pot of tea and answer all my correspondence before breakfast. And I thought, if it worked for C.S. Lewis, I'm going to get up early. And so that's what I started doing. I I set the alarm three days a week for 3 o'clock in the morning and Mm -hmm. did that consistently for 15 years. And I'm telling you, from 3 in the morning until 7 Mm -hmm. in the morning, nobody called, nobody wanted Mm -hmm. breakfast. (laughs) And all those creative ideas could just flow. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got the work done. That's amazing. And I think that just goes with good time management and like actually dedicating your time and getting into that rhythm of just constantly practicing your craft. I love right. that. And I love how you bring up C.S. Lewis. Lewis, he's one of my favorite Mine too. Yes. Well, mine too. Yes. Well, mine also. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. Well, and too. we know like he's really big on Christian values. And yes, I yes. noticed he was also referenced in your books here mm-hmm. while we were reading them. And I'm like, I loved how you tied his work into yours. Well, the Father Christmas. I love how Lewis had the Father Christmas in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes. 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 Because oh, yes. here comes Father Christmas, and he gives good gifts to these children and it's not because they deserve them it was grace it was a gift and i love that concept of a father christmas giving gifts like that rather than the western santa claus that we have you can be good naughty or nice or Mm -hmm. and and that it's such a uh, performance based whether or not you get a gift whereas this this british version of father christmas was here's a gift but there is a purpose to that gift. You are going to be able to use that gift later on to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's why we're blessed so we can bless others. So if we are given a gift of any sort, Mm -hmm. physical or an ability or a gift, it's so that we can give it back to others. Mm -hmm. That's why we... So that's why the books are Father Christmas. It's not Finding Santa Claus. It's Finding Father... It's that understanding of all the good gifts that God's given to us and that that picture that Lewis had with that Father Christmas I figured I, I kind of went with the Father as in our Father I went, I went that far good so that's how good. we go okay, we'll yeah. go, okay. That's, that's, that's I, I, I like that you that's know? where I went it's a, it's it's a, a Christmas it's a, it. yeah there was yeah. in his books because that's it's a went. Christmas story but that's the whole story of Christmas mm-hmm. right we always we forget about that, don't there. we? Hello, people. We forget about that. Come on. <laughs> it's like, hello. It's not the Hallmark cards. You know, we love Hallmark Channel and the cards, but it's about fa- our father. Yes. And so I, I saw the symbolism kind of. That's where, that's where I went. So I guess yeah. they're fine with that. I like that. Um, but I just have to, just to ask, it's a regular human level, because this isn't always easy. When you first started getting up at 3 a.m., how was it? Um, not too bad, because I really am an early riser. Okay. But I'm telling you, I when I read that Lewis had made a pop. He, uh, he said it something like, I make a proper pot of tea. Yeah. Well, um, I went, I seriously, I went and bought a teapot. Okay. A very cute little teapot. And so I wake up and go, oh, my alarm went off. Oh, I'm going to make a pot of tea. <laughs> and I still really love tea. But that was it. Yeah. I would have just this sort of ceremony of yeah. get up, go downstairs, make the tea. And yeah. then I can get started. Yes, I love it. <laughs> um, now, so, okay, so, and also you talk about something that's very popular in our field of work, fields of work, rejection. Oh, yes. yes. 
And you said <laughs> we went somewhere. You had like but you had ten rejections yeah. for, the for the for the very first book <coughs> I wrote. Book. Yeah, the first Christy Miller book yeah. was turned down ten times, and over a two-year period of time. No, but I knew that there were yeah. teenage girls that were waiting to get this book, so that yeah. kept me going. What was it about you know the earlier revisions of your book that kept getting rejected? Mm, good question. That is a good question. Yeah. It was not so much the book itself. It was that when that first teen book came out. So see, this was t over 20 years ago yeah. when the first book, the first novel I wrote came out over 20 years ago. And it was that uh, a book for teens 20 years ago seemed to the publishers like something that was not a full enough market to take a risk on a brand new writer. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people trying to break into music or write, it's that the, the the studio, the publisher, has to make take a risk on you. Yeah. And yeah. so that was it. And they just didn't see a market. They didn't see that there wow. they could sell it into the bookstores. And so the the publisher that did take that chance, then it just opened, and the next book, and the next book, and the the whole Christy Miller series yeah. has sold over four million oh, yeah. copies oh, yeah. in several languages. Yeah. So it was just this steady rolling out and get up, do the work. And that's it. With dreams, with goals, we all give up too easily. Yes. We Very think, true. oh, it's just uh, it didn't happen for me. Right. Well, uh, get up. Shut right. up. We're Go back to work. <laughs> Come on, baby. Get up I love it. Yeah. You feel no, that seriously. way. Yeah, yeah, you do. Because if it really is a passion, then it's not going to go away. And you'll be mm. 90 years old and going, oh, I was always going to write a book. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Right. You could have. Right. You, could you have. still could. You still yeah, could. Right. But you probably have more brain cells back then than you could really take advantage of. So, but also, yeah. did your yeah, faith play a place in, uh, place in this too? Of that, oh, you, after gosh. rejection, you're like, okay, God, I'm just going to leave it into your hands. Mm -hmm, I believe absolutely. in this series. I believe in these books. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. That was part of it too. Yeah. Yeah, and there was just this sense that this was something I couldn't step away from because it, it would it would always be there that I hadn't tried the next knock on the next door. Yeah try the next mm. yeah just keep going did so you have any yeah. influences in creating those first books because it was essentially your first you know breaking into that certain demographic but did you have any other influences to write those oh yeah because my husband was a youth pastor for okay. 25 years and we worked with these youth groups and so we'd have these times where we on one particular camping trip with a bunch of kids in Southern California we we're at San Clemente State Beach oh, okay. for a week and these girls, 13 year old girls, are all in their tent reading books instead of out at the beach. And I went in the tent, come on, there's sun and surf and sand and yeah, boys out there, what right, are you doing yeah. in the tent? And they had a stack of books from the library and they said, we wanna just read about the sun and surf and sand. How fun. And they wanted to stay in their tent. And so I read some of the books with them and I said, oh, these are just way too evocative for your 13 year old oh, heart. Wow, okay. Does your mother know this is what you're reading? Like. There's some information in there that oh, you really? shouldn't be it's absorbing. And so then as a result of that, the girls challenged me. And so why don't you write books for us? And at that time, I'd written some articles and some children's books. Yeah. And I said, oh, a whole novel, all those words. <laughs> all those words. I think all those words. I don't think I can do that. Yeah. And they said, how about if we help you? We'll tell you what to write. How hard could that be? Wow. Oh, wow. And that's how it started. So for those two years, when I had those rejections, those two years, I would meet with the girls every week and I would read to them what I had written and you guys I stood there like this shaking with the papers as I would read what I had written and they would just roll their eyes and say oh we would never say it that way and they oh, told me everything wow. that was wrong so it was like a focus group yeah. without realizing it yeah so yeah. then the girls would tell me they would change the names of the characters they'd tell me how they would dress or say things or what should happen and so I'd get up at three the next morning That's and amazing. I'd rewrite and rewrite. So that was the influence. Wow, you actually were in that mentality for your characters. I, I mean, that. have a yeah. bunch of 13 year old girls tell you what they think of your writing and yeah, sure. it'll They'll change your it life. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I have 11 year old granddaughter and she tells uh -huh. me things all the time. Exactly, you know <laughs> what I'm I know, saying. I do, I do know what I mean. That's, that's, that's a great story. You do really have a focus group basically. Your target audience was telling you what to, literally telling right. you what to write and how to write it. Yeah. That's divine invention. It, it really, yeah. it makes you see that even though you want to write for yourself mm -hmm, or what course, you think is interesting, course. if you want to sell it, you have to write for the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's another good tip for writers too. Like, yeah. get someone other than your best friend to read it. Yeah. 
and um, take that feedback seriously so that you can have thick skin and keep going. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yes, we know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. So your father, Christmas Novella, has both won two Reader's Choice Awards. Congratulations. Yes. And of course, every season they come out and are really good. And I also just want to say to folks, like, because we just came from a big Hardy's convention. We did. Yes. <laughs> family, family, Hardy's Family Union 2. Yes. Um, and you're a Hardy. I am a Hardy. Yay. I'm proud to be a so Hardy. We're the same family. We're all part of the same yes, family. Yes, that's right. Yes. And so what has the Hardy's love mean, meant for you um, so far? How's it meant to you? Well, I have really appreciated how they are so supportive of each other on their Facebook. It's a closed group. Mm -hmm. And when I went in, I was a lurker for a long time. <laughs> you know, just kind of watching these yes. conversations roll out. And then when it finally felt like, well, I asked one of the administrators, can I say something that Aaron is going to be in a movie based yeah. on my book? And she said, are you kidding? <laughs> They're going to just go nuts. Yes. And that's what it felt like, that I could start leaking some of the information. And I, yeah. when I was on set and I took some um, pictures and yes. video clips so I could start posting them on, on Hardee's and yeah. they loved it. Oh, it was fun. So then it really best some clips. Right. Yeah, this yeah. And it felt well, so like so we was. were really all enjoying the same experience yeah. together. Then that was fun. Well, we just learned that ourselves. Oh, yes, the it's, it's such a community, mm -hmm. and yes. not to steal your words, Jane, but you said it's a movement. It that is. It, it's incredible to have so many people with the same like-mindedness mm -hmm. and so helping support each other in a very healthy way oh my god very especially healthy. in oh yeah. like we're in an industry where we can be easily tainted yes. and yes. think otherwise and, and get overwhelmed yes. and stuff but to have like such a community to go to that truly supports each other mm -hmm. is rare I agree, and I, I, I said I, I stood up. I did these testimonials, and I, I did one because they were there for me through a hard, Aww. rough time this year, a few months ago. Um, and they, I said it's, it's not just a show; it's just a movement because yeah. they do support other things that go. I mean, they'll support. I have a blog. They support my business. Mm -hmm. They support things that we do. Some of our other shows that we do, Marissa and I do. We do a lot of stuff here. They'll they'll tweet our other shows out. If I recommend a book, That's they'll recommend. Right. I mean, they they completely. They're there, and we got to see firsthand 520 some odd Hardies wow. in one room wow. staring at us. It was just like, it was amazing. And I just think anybody in the orbit gets, gets to have that. Well, and I saw a little video clip of that that was taken from the stage, either Lori or Aaron mm -hmm. had taken it, and I saw Jeanette Oak in the front row. And wow. what a gift to be able to have the author of the original books be there I mean, I got chicken skin thinking okay. about okay. it for her. I, it's all about you right now, but I just want to say really quick, she she's is amazing, first amazing. of all. And she, we had her on our show yes. through Skype. Yes. She came on our show. Said, I can just her talk all day long. Yes. And then we got to see her there, and big hug, and we yes. talked to her. And I asked her to adopt me. <laughs> I said, sure, 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 I'll adopt you. Um, and, Does that uh, mean you have to move to Canada like, now? <laughs> sure, okay, bye. See you guys later. Sure, bye, for, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys later. It's clean up there. It's very clean. Um, but notice that she is, and yeah, to have her there, um, she's sharp, she's smart, she has mm -hmm. wisdom, and just like, she's an amazing person. Just being around her, it's like, like it's almost like going to church, like just listening to her talk. It was amazing. Do you know, when I first was published, she wrote me a little personal note on her personal stationery oh congratulating me because we were both interviewed by the same magazine okay. and she said something about congratulations and I saved that because Classy. I thought Aww. she really went out of her way yeah. to do that she didn't have to do that no that's classy it is so, it's so classy it is. Because, you know, again in our business right of that have you read her work any of her, her oh stuff? yes you know? oh yes, yes. Yeah. and yeah. her her books started coming out the about the same time. Well, I think a little bit before okay. the Christy Miller books yeah. did. And those were the books I was buying for the girls in our youth group okay. to read. Oh, and cool. they were saying, well, those are older characters. We want oh, teenagers. Yes, they are. Yes. So that's it. So then. She was a young woman by then. It's full circle in a way. It's it is full circle. circle. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, God, I love it. So let's talk about the book. Let's get in okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's get in there. Where should we start, Marissa, and put the book? Well, Finding Father Christmas. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I love the character of Miranda because mm. it, I'm always about stories about self discovery mm -hmm. and the fact that, yes, she is a protagonist woman. I, I do have to throw that out, but that she's trying to find herself and finding answers in a world where she's sadly alone. Yes. And I love like just the journey that she goes on and the people that she meets and ultimately do become her family. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just it's it's literally, a like, literally. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful story. It really mm -hmm. is. 
Because it, it really tugs at the heartstrings, that the belonging. We all want to belong and mm -hmm. to be welcomed in. Mm -hmm. And to see that played out for her, just... Yeah. But also the thing for me with this book, too, just piggybacking out for her, is that Miranda... Is her search is kind of noble. She's looking for looking well, looking for father Christmas, so to speak, looking for father. But also how it affects the world, how the world's small, and how mm. what you do can affect someone else. And yeah. so I, that's what I got. People know who like watch my shows. I'm always into deep meanings and stuff. Yeah. Um, and to me, what I got of it was her search was kind of noble. Just my, I want to find my father. I've had so much loss. I'm alone. But then by doing that, there's this family back there has their own life has their own stuff going on. They don't know all, I mean, you could be really affecting them mm -hmm. too. And she goes, and she meets them, and she, they, it's, just, it's just so many layers to this story mm -hmm. that I got out of it that I thought. And she is the, like I said, protagonist. She's the one who's the catalyst. She's the one who's doing this. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's her journey, but it's not just her journey. Yeah. Well, and when both Aaron and Wendy, when we were on set and met them, they said, when I saw the script, I wanted to do this because there's the intrigue and the layers. And mm -hmm. that's fun for the Hallmark Movies and Mystery Channel yeah. because they like the mystery. Yes, it's yeah. a very so much a mystery. Gave... Very much a mystery. Mm -hmm. The movie was it very much a mystery. It wasn't like you could figure it out right no. within the first no. five minutes. No. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? So I was really grateful that they used all those elements from mm -hmm. the book because so much else changed, yeah. for, which yeah. it always does. Yeah. Yeah. My husband was going to buy me a, a sweatshirt that says, don't judge my book by its movie. Okay. But <laughs> but then the movie came out, and it was like, it's good. I really don't have it's, a problem. It's, 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 it's all good. Give me the sweatshirt, right. but I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> but oftentimes, it's so yes, different. So different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing is, it didn't really change anything. It might have changed the order, but the story is still the same at the end. And I, and I like that, mm -hmm. and I liked how there were some lines in the book given to some characters who are actually given to now matters characters yes. in, yeah. in the book so like lines change but it didn't change the story yeah so yeah parts were taken out parts mm -hmm. were added and it was the book is set in England well I'm gonna ask you <laughs> oh you getting yes. to that I'm gonna ask you that girl like <laughs> okay, I said I'll wait <clears throat> no but that's right now as we get into that I'm like how did you feel when they try, decided to change the location because in some story like in this story the location was a character Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was like it was another character in the book, mm -hmm. in the books. So they changed location. Even though the location wasn't like they went from England to Maui or something like that. I mean, it was still. <laughs> but the street names were the same. Yeah, street names were the yeah, same. Yeah, that's right. So, but how did you feel about that at first when they suggested it's going to be Vermont and not? I will tell Lundy. you. Tell me. Tell us. Tell us, girl. Tell <laughs> let us. Let me tell you. When I first had the conversations with the producer, and they let me know when you get this. Well, my agent told me when you get the contract. I think it was thirty some pages. You realize when you sign that you're turning over okay. all control, all rights. And it took me a day where okay. I, I looked at the contract and I thought about it. And you know, every book when you're a writer, it's your baby. It's your baby. Mm -hmm. You gave birth to it. Yeah. And so then I, I just, I just felt like just trust the, the people that you're working with are great. Just trust the process and let the story roll out in and. and be its own new version of the same elements in the story. So I had to go to the bank and have the um, contract notarized so I could sign it in front of yeah. the notary public. And the woman at the bank, um, I, I was really shy, but I said, well, my book is being made into a Hallmark movie. And I had, Hallmark movie? <laughs> I love Hallmark movies. Yes. What's the book? And she's on her phone ordering the book. Wow. While her it's like I've got to sign my life away. Isn't that, isn't that kind of yeah, like, ironic? Yeah. And I drove home and I felt really this mixture of nervous, what have I done? But then this excitement that mm. eclipsed that nervousness of who gets to do this? Who That's gets true. to have their book That's made true. into a movie? There are hundreds, maybe thousands of authors who have submitted or tried or their agents have. And to just, I just sort of sat in the privilege of that mm. sense of, I get to work with amazing people that do this for a living. They mm -hmm. know what they're doing and just let it go. So then after that, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Just do whatever yeah. you want to do to yeah. to make the story come together. And I was so pleased. I was so it still worked. It delighted. Still worked. Yeah. yeah. It still worked. So and then so many people have emailed me after saying, "Well, I love the movie, and I went and got the book, and I actually like a lot because you can yeah. put a lot more elements yeah, in the book." Yeah. 
and because there's a lot more about the true meaning of Christmas in the book yeah. and Miranda searching for her birth father and finding that her heavenly father has always been there for her yeah. and so that tender part that was not in the movie is in the book and that's mm -hmm. So people are finding that as it like was more religious in the book double. than it was in the oh, movie. Absolutely. Obviously, it's uh, more, it more yeah. symbolism in there. Right. What I liked about what the book does mm -hmm. better than the movie, mm -hmm. I, I have to say, just reading it, I understood Miranda's backstory mm -hmm. a lot more because yes. Yes. Um, I didn't realize how disconnected she was from her mother. Mm -hmm. Like in the movie, it shows that Briefly, yeah, she kind of yeah. grew up with her mother, but when it, her mission was to find the, her father, but mm -hmm. like I didn't realize why she was so driven to find her father because her mother lied to her yeah. her mm -hmm. whole time. I'm like, oh, that's a big enough motivation to literally go to London and find your father. Another so, theme. Yeah, off of really that, for her, another theme is mm -hmm. find out your parents are, are human. Yeah. They, there were mm -hmm. secrets. Parents have secrets. Parents don't yeah. be, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent myself. I mean, there are things I can tell my kids certain times. Nothing, right. like, nothing like this. But you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Like, there's things you don't tell kids because they're kids. Yes. And so a lot of times you see your parents a certain way. Yeah. And she saw her mom a certain way. And then finds out, not saying her mom wasn't that way, but then she finds out, oh, there's stuff that went on. Yeah. Yeah. The parents are really lovely. Which is kind of real life yeah and to give that hope wh wherever your story is there's mm -hmm. always hope yes yeah, there's always that next chapter yeah I agree absolutely and, and I think with the story itself once she finds out who her real father is I think that gave some a good conclusion to the mother because yes. And yes. It, it wrapped up her disconnect with her mother it's like now she is at that point of acceptance and actually mm -hmm. maybe forgiveness of her mother yes. after all this time I yeah. saw that. I got that too. The same thing. It was like she, it finally came kind of a, it was a full circle thing for her. For finding her father Christmas, mm -hmm. she also found her mother in a way. Yeah. yeah. It totally, it totally yeah. works. We totally, we totally got that. Beautiful. And it is, it is beautiful. I know it's, it's why I love this. And the fact that it's set around Christmas, like you said, it, it makes everything just more magical, of oh, course, yeah. too, mm -hmm. of course. Um, the one thing I want to ask you about, I'm just going to just go a little further, um, the theater piece of this. Mm -hmm. For me, reading the books, I felt like you were really descriptive. Were you ever an actor or or in theater? Because you just you, you were really descriptive and really good about and talking about the different stuff. Oh. The theater stuff. No, well, in high school, I had a walk-on part. I didn't have any mm. lines. And um, <laughs> death of a salesman. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so legit. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but no lines. But I I really do love theater, and okay. I love the. And especially the setting that they found, the actual community theater for yeah. the movie. Mm -hmm. I just love that sense of these small theaters. And when I visited England and gone to some of these plays and these really great mm -hmm. Victorian s decor and that sense that you are uh, enclosed in this moment and you are going to experience something mm -hmm. that, that usually only happens in your imagination, yeah. but you're going to see your imagine the characters on stage mm -hmm. so that when I was writing that part of the book I was right. remembering some of those okay. experiences of being in the it. audience okay yeah. it felt it that's to do a shout out to people out there in many most most uh, big large cities have small theaters and they, sometimes they're like yes. 99 cent theaters we've seen LA there's a bunch of them here or 40 seat theaters they're, community, they're, they're, theaters. The community theaters yes. you should go yeah, to them exactly. there's some really great stuff happening at these community theaters and I have friends here in the business I see them all the time I did community theater for okay. years so, so like you did. yeah well my background's like theater actually <laughs> that's how I got into production but this isn't about it's not about, <laughs> about, <laughs> about <laughs> but, but, yeah, so but, can show. I interview you <laughs> I didn't really just little shout I'm just saying that there's a lot but, of small theater but like I so I have have that appreciation for the yeah. theater production and I loved how in these stories that you, mm. you talk about the Merchant of Venice and you talk about the Tempest. The Tempest. Yeah. And yes. I mean I Shakespeare he's one, probably one of the biggest influences of just theater mm -hmm. and the Elizabethan time back then but so I loved how you brought in those cultural references as well. Mm -hmm. Well Miranda especially the Tempest I mean yeah. from my yes. remember recollection of Tempest she was the only female character in the play correct? I, think she I believe so. One, the one that's actually on they mentioned other ones I think she was right. the only one that was on and her and her father had their own stuff going on yes, too. Yes. About the play. You you yeah. are good. I tell you, I'm, I'm James, it. You are good. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I again, I wrote the book eleven years ago, but I must have recently seen the Tempest or or read it or something for that to really surface oh, okay. because yeah. it was very much in my mind when I wrote the book. I I I got off the page. I was like, mm. I was uh -huh. like, mm, okay. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so, okay, so the theater, so that was a great piece. But the family, the meaning of family and all that. The, mm-hmm. the meaning of family, because in the first book, she's really by herself, and she's yes. getting into getting introduced to this family. And then we skip a year with the second book. Yep. She's already so integrated. They love her. She's calling people mother and yes. father. Mm-hmm. And, like, really considering all these kids, like, her nieces and nephews. Yeah. And, like, I loved how there was a drastic change. And mm-hmm. for me, who just, like, read these books pretty much consecutively, I yeah. was like, okay, now this is a big change over a year that mm-hmm. she's so involved in this family now and she actually truly loves them. I think that was, um, mm-hmm. you know, just a great meaning that after finding and going on this mission, finding her father, she got a whole family out of it. Sure did. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. Yeah, she did. And um, I like the fact that she, it showed that her faith started to happen too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It started because she wasn't raised, you know, with any religion, so to speak. No. So she saw people and saw how it worked for them. Except for the crazy lady with all the cats oh, and yeah. no television. Oh, yeah. And she wasn't <laughs> sure what to do with that. <sighs> I know folks like that actually. No, One more layer. Um, yeah, another, another, layer, another layer. But that's, that's the whole thing. It's another layer of that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it, I just thought it was really interesting that she goes there, gets settled in. Mm-hmm. But she's still, there's a mission that why she's there. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, the layers are so crazy. It's like, she gets there, she gets accepted, and then she learns she meets his family, and she gets accepted with them. And then it's like, <laughs> it, just, it just kept going, like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. That's where the mystery, you know, the intrigue came in. It was just like, when it all comes out, was I mean, how's it going to be? Because you're just like, we, so she's really getting integrated into this family and this, and this community. Right. Which is what is such a struggle every every holiday season starting at Thanksgiving. So these people you only see once or twice a year, you're gonna get together with them. Is it gonna be good? Is it gonna be horrible? Are we gonna really build our relationships? Mm-hmm. Just cause we have, share the same blood, do we share the same interests? And, or is it just gonna be another disaster? And so that's always the question at Christmas, let's just say, I mean Thanksgiving as well, but Christmas. So I, I do distinctly remember that I wanted to write the story in such a way that it was a satisfying connection at Christmas time so that it made it that was the real gift that was the bonus yeah. of being there because it's something we all long for we yeah. idealize how it's all going to be when we're together oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you leave and go next Christmas let's go to Tahiti or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. but how comforting it is to read a story where it turns out so well for Miranda and you go you know I can make a little more effort there, there's some hope or there's yeah. there's that way that we can get closer together mm-hmm. that community it's so important it is I think it is, it is. and we're always talking about community and village and yes like that's my we thing we need mm-hmm. each other to support each other to just get really get yes. that life that human connection um, I, I find that brilliant um, what I found interesting about the engaging Father Christmas you had to rewrite this four times Yes. Oh my God! Talk so, about rejection. Well, rejection. Rejections. 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 What, what was it about this one that yeah. you had to yeah. rewrite four <laughs> times after you already had the first <coughs> one successfully published? Well, I had a brand new editor at the publishing house, and okay. the first one was a successful book, and the previous editor really liked it, and so I wrote sort of along the same lines, without a real love story. Okay. I mean, it was there, but it was. Yeah. And so uh, this new editor came back and said, oh, no, we need more romance. So I wrote it a second time, and it was maybe a little too much romance. I oh, think. Or, oh or, my yeah, God. It was well. just like, no, it was maybe stilted. Maybe that's a better way. It okay. wasn't naturally rolling out. Okay. Like, okay, let's see what we can do. And then she goes, no, that just doesn't do it. How about if you do this and try this and write this? And so I was starting to lose confidence, and I had taken a, a, a course on a certain – type of writing to structure your novel and so I thought wow all these years I've been writing and I don't know what I'm doing and somebody finally figured it out and they called me on it (laughs) and so I better take a class and I took this workshop and I thought okay so the third time I restructured it and it was a completely different order of things and I turned Mm -hmm. it in she said what have you done it's just disastrous (laughs) write it a fourth time and I didn't think I could I thought "That's, that's it I've the jig is up. Somebody yeah. figured out. Yeah, I can't. I don't, what am I doing? Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, and I called my agent, and she goes, just give it a day. Yeah. Just pray about it and see what happens. Yep, and you go. know what happened was the next morning, we, we were living in Portland, Oregon area at the time, and a friend called the next morning from Maui and said, could you, my husband and I, could you come house sit for a month uh, in our house in Maui? 
and water the banana tree. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I and we love said, it. Yes, we can do that. And I called my agent and I said, I have a place to go to just let my imagination yeah. mm-hmm. come back. And that's what happened. I was able to write it before time. What a As, place to do it, too. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, what a shame. Beautiful. It, so, yeah. But it's August. So the month of August. Oh. And I'm writing, it's snowing over the <laughs> Oh, that's so funny, right? Exactly. <laughs> Just for, but in the end, see, this is another lesson for people that are on projects and they think, Jolly. oh, rejected. Oh, rejected. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, okay, give up. But if I had given up, we would not have had the love story that Hallmark needed to make the movie. Mm-hmm. So the movie would not have been made, I think. Right. So it was the benefit of that hard work and that being humbled out mm-hmm. completely mm-hmm. Yes. so mm-hmm. that it could be rebuilt and restructured and I learned and I, but I also found a lot more confidence in what my instincts were instead of this workshop that I had taken and here's mm-hmm. one way to write a novel. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not the way I do. Right. And everybody has their own style. Yeah. So I'm not going to try and go by somebody else's style. I'm going to go by what I have done in the past mm-hmm. and, and that was it and that banana tree <laughs> it, yeah we have bananas off that oh, banana tree I love I want it. You to know. I'm a gardener so I love that kind of stuff I yeah. love it I love it I love it I love it I love it uh, what what I loved about the second one it kind of jumped into like already a year has passed mm-hmm. and it just jumped into the Ian and Miranda relationship yes. and me just being a fan of romance I, was like, I like yeah. the journey I was like what happened we mm-hmm. missed a lot I was like I wanted to see their budding romances but we eventually like could fill in the gap with the yeah. memories of Miranda and how like their first date together and all yeah. that. And I'm like, and I like that. I was like, okay, I'm glad I kind of figured out where it started, how it started. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that was an interesting format to just say, skip yeah. a year and get right into just, it. Just a different take on it, just yeah. different take. Because you want to get to Christmas. As yes. as you can. <laughs> right, exactly, right. <laughs> sure, like in right. real life, right? <laughs> that's true. I know I like this. Yeah, it's a form. It was like, yeah, you're like, oh my God, there's a blank, but then it really isn't. He did mm-hmm. in kind of flashback form and it was like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Just a, just a way of doing it. It's yeah. good. And it's just still where it worked. Um, and of course, you know, she meets, she has the family there, and um, Margaret, the mother, another stuff, formidable mm-hmm. character comes in. And of course, you know, she knows kind of things. She has ideas and those things. <laughs> yes. And uh, I like ha- the fact that there was a, a another alpha female yeah. really there mm. to kind of challenge Miranda yes. in a way. Other mm-hmm. than she's not the only female in the story, that there's someone yes. else that this father could be affecting. I agree. Right. I totally right. agree. I totally agree with that. And then we have Edward the half brother. Well, it turns out we'll be her the half brother. Yeah. And how and how you wrote him and Mark the nephew and all them and so the so was it easier to write the female characters or the male characters? I'm always curious about that when you're writing this particular story. Definitely the female characters and I um so I tell you something. We're, it's just us. Yeah. We're, we're, no, it's just us. So we're talking sequel? And so, but you know, we'll see. Okay, okay. But one of the avenues to that we can expand on that's not in the book would be Ian's background and yeah. what about these yes. male characters yeah. and what are their issues because we see a lot more of the female characters. So that's been fun to create, okay. and see okay. what might be there, and see what we might be able to do, and. Mm-hmm. Who knows what might happen? I don't know yet, but Ooh, that's exciting. it's always good to talk. A little exclusive, you guys. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Kind of exclusive. It's just, but it's just, I thought it was just us. Just us. I mean, I, I was talking to my, myself at home later when I watched this later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just us, James. Just, just, just us. Yeah. Dude, I love that. That's exciting because yeah. your kissing Father Christmas is Ruth. It's right. not really, I mean, it's some, there's a thread there, but it's, it's not It's a different about character, Miranda right? Yeah, somebody different, isn't it? Right. So. so the third book, Kissing Father Christmas, yeah. is Anna, who's Anna, a yeah. cousin of Ian, yeah. and so she goes to a certain wedding. Yes, but a bump. Yes, uh-huh. and um, and then we see her love story. Yeah, roll out from there. Yeah, so. yeah. I want to read that one next. I just now I'm gonna, I want to read that one next. Yeah, I, just, I heard about it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, so the female characters were was that your intention the whole time to make them strong yet human. That was your whole. That was your whole. And I think so. you, you accomplished that. So that was your. That was always your thing. Is that they're gonna be strong women, but not like, <laughs> but not, but not like you know strong. Mission accomplished. Not like superheroes, but like they're strong. But they have. Yeah. They, you know, they they're human. They're human at the same time. I feel like you did that. That was Good. always your intention. Maybe not consciously, yeah. but to be able to keep reading about characters, you want to like them, mm-hmm. and we don't like characters who give up and who are mm-hmm. weak and who. You know, so she had to have some tenacity to go on this journey to find her birth father. Yeah. And I have I have a very close real life friend 
that I drew from her real life experience of searching for her. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. I was going to say. I keep jumping ahead. I don't know. Don't worry. You know what? No, no, we're on the same wavelength. That's why I love it. Don't say. I'm like, what's anything from personal experience? Anything not from personal yourself, but anybody that you kind of a composite or anybody you know. Yes, she had a clue, and actually the clue was a baseball card. Wow. And it turned out that he was, in fact, on a professional baseball team. What? And she did the process to contact him, and um, it was such an emotional experience. And um, didn't didn't go as dreamily as Miranda's did, but I, I thought, what? From the heart of every, I mean, this is a woman my age, but that little girl in her Mm -hmm. never got past the question, does he know about me? Does he Mm -hmm. care about me? Why didn't he want to ever know me? Mm -hmm. And so to be able to have those questions answered uh, was a really powerful premise for the books Mm -hmm. because in real life, it's super emotional. Mm -hmm. I, I completely felt Miranda's little girl in this book. Did you? I did. I felt it. It was always, you, you, always feel, you always feel like, yeah, I'm a grown man. I'm this. I'm that. But when it comes to your parents mm-hmm. or lack of parents or bad parents or good parents, it doesn't matter what it is, you still are that kid. You're always that kid. Yeah. No matter how old you are. I'm going to still call me her baby. And I'm like, I'm old. <laughs> uh, and I'm a grandfather but myself. It's like the mentality. You'll always the, be a child. You'll always be a child. That's I got it. that in the books. That's it. That she was, talking to me, she was always... Yeah that child searching because she lost. Exactly, and that's why when we were on set and we were having lunch before they were gonna go film the scene where um, Aaron Krako is, as Miranda, is saying, but what about me? Did, did he even know that I existed? And yeah. she said, that's such a pivotal line because as she was rehearsing it, running lines with Wendy Malick, Aaron said, I immediately felt like a nine-year-old little girl. Mm. And when you see it in the movie, she Mm. really does. I mean, everything that comes out with the simple line, what about me? But you believe it. You feel that Mm. she's, she's never, that soul wound of hers has just never been healed. And that's why she made the journey so that she can have that answer and get the healing started. So I always say that kids only want two things, to know Mm. they're loved, that they matter. Yeah. yeah. Know that they're wanted. Yeah. Like everything else, everything else yeah. comes after that. But I always yeah. feel like those are two basic things. They want to be heard and seen. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. And it never really goes away when, even when you're an adult. That's still part of when it comes to certain parts of your life. You still want to be, you want to still yeah. know that you're loved and that you mattered. Yeah. And I got that from the story. Yeah. Totally got that in there. I love that. It's beautiful. It's, yes. a, it's a good message for not just, you know, Miranda, but for everyone who's just searching for themselves. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and get those answers. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about the movie a little bit because I mean the, this sure. movie. I mean it's. I mean this is. We we've we've all seen it. Everybody in the room seen it. <laughs> yeah. um, it was it was really good. I wanted more. I was like, is that the end? Like see? no. See? I was live sequel. tweeting while sequel. watching. Sequel. It was like sequel, sequel, sequel. 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 Same existence. It was two hours. I'm like I want more. <laughs> like this should be a mini series. Right. Um, I think it was perfectly cast. I think everybody was really cast too. well in it. Especially Wendy Malick when she came oh. on. Oh. And to me, okay, so spoiler alert to anybody who hasn't seen the film yet, yeah, it's, it's, spo- it's a minor spoiler alert. The scene where Margaret kind of makes Miranda come out, so to speak. <laughs> Forces her. For, yeah, it was yeah. Like, kinda, you know, at the dinner table. Yeah. yeah, the kids go in the other room, get the, get the presents, so you stay up there, and kind of starts to question, where were you born? It's such a question. The acting between both of them Incredible. was so yeah. amazing. Yeah. Aaron and Wendy killed it. I know. I know, and my agent and I were on set that day. We could only be on set three days, and that happened to be one of the days we were there. And Mm -hmm. you know, when they were filming that, the dinner table scene was nine minutes long, and the director said, what What were we thinking, nine minutes? And here's the the gaffer, the guy with the... (laughs) Oh, my God. Not the gaffer. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like... But they got it all in one take what? Like nine what? minutes oh my around god because each of the actors were really ready and wow. on okay. point so that it happened that as we're sitting there and watching through the monitor the the crew is coming and gathering around really quietly and just watching and there's kind of like this tender stillness wow. because it's speaking to 
that again that child in each yeah. of them and one of them afterwards came up and said I, I i would give anything to have a happy ending like that in my life yeah. so when you see that wendy is embraced yes it does. you know so didn't, didn't expect that i was like, that, like you know, yes like, so it could go either way right mm -hmm. but i'm telling you wendy and those eyebrows oh, she can <laughs> she can just raise an eyebrow and you're like oh no Oh dear. She could act What's with her eyes. Happen? Yes. She is amazing. She kept looking at her. She was like looking at her. Yeah. And every time she had an answer, they'd flash back on her and look at her. She's just looking at her like, mm hmm Well, they're both incredibly, you know, talented. And obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, with Aaron yeah, going to Julia, yeah. they're both, yes. uh, they have that acting experience and the fact mm -hmm. that they can go for nine minutes. I that, know. That's a testament to their theater background. Yes. And just the their craft and... Doing, but you're they right. Do so well. And they all, they, the all the actors. Thing. I mean, I mean, the guy who played, who's the brother, he had his reaction, mm -hmm. and his yeah. wife had her. She was kind of yeah. crying in the corner a little bit. I mean, everybody had the reaction. Yeah. Was, and when and when and when and when Randall went to say, "Well, maybe I'll just go now." I was like, "Oh no, you don't, don't go anywhere." And they got, got really excited. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh my god, I got so exciting!" They got kind of brought to the what other room. What is going to happen? And yeah. they continue the conversation, and the brother goes off. And he's like, "You just want money," and it's just it's such a great scene. I know it's all like done. This is well. Crazy. See, you know, they the way they. Feel it. I learned so much. The, tell us, tell us. Yeah, yeah. So that whole nine minutes, being around the table and Aaron getting up, and, the, and she's still within the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, so her she takes her her stage direction spot. I yeah. don't know what it's called. <laughs> but then um, when it, they say cut, and then they go back, and it was the rest of the afternoon was just doing those close ups. Okay. So they had to do the scene four times, wow. I think. Wow over and over and that amazed me how those actors because as soon as they did the nine minutes break go to lunch so we have like this hour and a half lunch and we walk through this field and there's the 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 trailer that's yes. got our food yeah. you know the wagon and so we sit under this tent and we're all sitting at the table talking and showing pictures of our family <laughs> and then they go back on and they're right there like mm. they are back in that character and and we even asked Aaron we said, how do you like pull the emotions, like makeup freshens you up and then you, you're right back in it? Yeah. And she said that she thinks it's like a muscle that when you're an actor, you have to have this muscle that you're exercising so you can just go right back to where you were physically, not just on your mark, but emotionally mm -hmm. and your facial expression and your posture, everything. And every single one of them. Did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was that was a happy day filming. Yeah. Oh, you were there for that. Wow, that's great. I know. Been that was really amazing fun. to witness. Because that's such a pivotal moment in the book, let mm -hmm. alone the movie. Yeah. 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 That must have been quite good. And you know, when we were having lunch, and I said to Wendy, oh, wow, you looked at Aaron and said, if he had known that you existed, he would have moved heaven and earth to find yeah. you. And Wendy said, what did you, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I said the line back, and she goes, well, actually, the line, and as the way it was in the script, and uh, was much less punch to it. Of, it was more of a, um, he, he would have tried to find you, yeah. right? If he had known, he would have tried. And so Wendy said, I like that. And I said, well, I think that's how it is in the book because that's mm -hmm. how it yeah. comes to my mind. She goes, I'm gonna talk to the director. And she's got these well, fingers, she goes, uh, I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to the director. And I didn't get to see the movie until everybody okay, else did yeah. when it premiered yeah. oh. that night on November 13th. And Same. I'm watching and I'm waiting for it, waiting yeah. for it. And it's like, Wendy, you did, did it. it. You, did it yes. you pulled it up. She and did. You, that, just that little change gave so much more weight I agree. to mm -hmm. that line. And I think it then pulled even more out of Aaron. Oh, it's just so fun, the, the organicness of how they work together. Yeah, well they did, they did. Oh, completely. It was great chemistry yeah. on screen. Great chemistry on screen. Yeah. And, uh, and so what, what scene uh, made you cry? Well, that one, what definitely. Scene? And then this one's, this is kind of funny, but when we were, um, <laughs> when we were watching it being filmed and there's a scene where Aaron walks up to the framed poem on the shelf yes. that James oh, has written. Oh yeah, oh I like the scene. Okay, yeah. so when we had gone to lunch, Erin said, where did you get that poem? And I said, well, I wrote it. She goes, you wrote, it's a lovely poem. And it was actually lo a little longer okay. in the book. Okay, yeah. And um, she said, I thought maybe you, you got it from something. And it's like, oh no, I wrote it. And I cried because when they filmed that, and Aaron had gone in and, and, and looked at the poem, and I'm watching the monitor, 
and I see this zoom in on this poem and then Miranda's reading my poem and you guys I didn't grow up in a house where my poems were put on the refrigerator mm. or you know mm. that a anyone yeah. in my family said oh you're going to be a writer it just yeah. it came in other ways mm. and I had a great childhood but there's still talk about that line you know the little girl yes, in all of us yes. and it was like my poem is on this big refrigerator now that millions of people are going to look yeah. at. And there was just this sense that I, I was created to use words to make art. And that to do that, and it's so uphill, and it's so much work, and to see it validated in that little way, uh, it, I, I'm going to cry oh, now. I love about, it. Because I love there's it. something in it. all of us for that yeah. need, for that affirmation. And there's so yes. much rejection in this industry. There's yes. so much you have to just give up, and uh, we've talked about already. But then when you see, when I was, you know, sitting under that banana tree, yeah. <laughs> wherever it was, yes. you know, when I was alone and creating mm. this art with my imagination and typing this little poem, Will anyone ever read this book? Will it ever? And there, it's it's framed and it's in the movie. And art matters, and that yes, that yes. depth that comes mm -hmm. from a heart that can touch a heart mm -hmm. is what we have as writers and artists the the opportunity to, to really hone that craft, so that it's it it brings that hope and that beauty. In, in other people's lives. So I, well said. that's a long answer, but well said. it really well said. is, again, a reason to keep at something, to not give up courage and give up hope, and to, when those small moments come, they're not a lot of them, yeah. but just to go ahead and Take drink them in. Them in. Take yeah. them in. It's like, I, you said something that I thought all the time, art does matter. It's just as important as health and culture and politics and everything yes. else it actually informs some of all those things and law and it's it's in science it's just as important art can help change lives absolutely they can it's yes. I, I, I agree with that completely 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 um I know. Like, you say, you say, I know. I got. I got two yeah. myself. I mean, I know. I cry. I cry on these shows all the time. So I'm like, I'm always crying on these shows. Yes, yeah, so that's just well, very, very well said. Um, uh, it was a beautiful movie, and for I believe you actually had a screening in Hawaii. Or was it Maui? Oh, that was so fun. For this film? Yes, I live on Maui, and Aww. so we had. Uh, okay. I, girl. Yeah. It's just between us. Just again. Between us. <laughs> so when I was about to give up because it was I said a five year process from it's when, a long time. Yeah. Yes. And so I went to a Bible study with women at my church and I they had prayer requests and I said you know, could you could we pray about this Hallmark movie because I thought it was gonna happen and it's not gonna happen and I don't know. And the woman who was in charge of the, the Bible study her name's Sandy and she said, oh, it's going to happen. It, it has to happen. And it's we're going to pray about it, but it has to happen. She's just a woman of faith. Okay. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, Sandy, you can believe it. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sure. And then uh, another woman there, Tony, said, not only is it going to happen, but when it does, we are going to have a screening on the lawn at church, and we're going to put up a big screen and invite everybody to come That's have a picnic. So funny. And it's going to happen. And okay. it was just this really sweet thing, like even when yeah. you're beat down and discouraged that your friends yes, yes. have this courage for yeah. you. So we prayed and then we just walked away. And it was another two and a half or three years wow. before it came out. But as soon as it, uh, um, and actually Sandy passed away oh, three years ago. Yeah. And so it was even more tender because the women yeah. in that group go, well, Sandy, Sandy knew so this was going to happen. And so Tony, as soon as it was certain it was going to happen tony said i'm a woman of my word i am going to put uh, on a party for you we're going to oh celebrate and sandy is going to be watching from heaven yes. <laughs> and uh. so we got this 50 foot inflatable screen <laughs> okay and our <laughs> church has a big long <laughs> grass yeah and so the guys that were putting it up at three in the afternoon the four foot cables the wind was so strong and it was starting to rain and it was pulling the cables out of the ground oh my God. so we went into the the um, church but we had lots of food and we had so much fun there were about almost 500 people that came wow. in, in spite of the storm and yeah. the rain and everything else and wow. i got to share that 
moment with them, wow. which was really oh fun. Yeah. Really, really fun. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Hi Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> that's so nice. That's so nice. That she believed amazing. in it. Yeah. She believed in it so much. Yeah. But so. that sense of community, like uh, exactly. everyone else supporting you throughout your dreams. I, I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah, but you know the difficult thing is that you tell everybody, and then the next week they say, so what'd you hear? Right, nothing. Yeah, right, you don't right. hear anything for three years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I keep asking, you're like, oh, the whole like, why did I tell them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, it does, it does happen that but, way in our business. But it's true. It's like in the background, the pieces mm -hmm. are falling into place. You just be patient. But I always say that, you know, the destiny's come, it's there. It's already set for you. Just have to just, things close up so the death, the path is clearer. So it, it'll, yes. it'll, get, it'll get there. You'll get there, and you got there. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're talking about you now. You had this this great film that came out that we love so mm -hmm. much. There was yes. a, a great books that came out. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's such an incredible thing. You're you're a testament to the American dream. Yes. <laughs> well, American there, dream. It is. there it is. There it is. Yeah. You, can, you can do it. We can we can all do it. You just you, you can do it. Um, this is so great. Uh, we noticed a couple things. There were some differences we did notice in the books and the movies. And one yeah. thing we said he combined them two. Now we know why he kind of combined the two of them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, because yeah. I admittedly, I watched the movie before I read the books. And so when I read the first book, I was like, where's Ian? Right. You know, where is he? <laughs> right, like, right. Turn where's the, the love yes. <laughs> Like, when does yes, he show exactly. up? And then mm -hmm. it wasn't until the very last page. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I get it. I'm going to mm -hmm. have to keep reading. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the father's health issue in the movie, but yes. that's in book two. Right. So that's, that's kind of there. And there were some lines given to Ian from the book that were given to him in the movie. I know it sounds confusing, to but. The characters. To the characters. Yeah. To the characters, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of spread out. It's fine. But it's so just That's how things. they make movies. Yeah. They, you know, yeah. pick and choose, and yeah. it works. Yeah. And it works. I, I did love with uh, Miranda's character how, like, yes, she disconnected herself from her mother, but she also disconnected herself from the theater. And then once yes. she oh, yeah. was, like, found Ian in, yes. in the movie that he also, like, his character helped her along to get back to theater. Mm -hmm. And, like, reviving mm -hmm. that love yeah. that she had always as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. we saw that he kind of helped her with that too. Another full circle kind of thing mm -hmm. in the books. A like, whole lot going on. In I the like books. it. We, we love, we love it. I mean, hey, like I said, these books aren't that. I mean, folks, they're easy reads. They're not. They're, they're not. They're not like five hundred pages each or anything. But yeah. like, but you like packed a, second, you packed a lot of yeah. stuff in there. We dissected, There's but so you did. Much. But you did pack a lot of great things in these books that just make you just keep going and going and almost like read them twice. You read them twice. You can kind of get there's several mm -hmm. things going on in there you can catch. I've been told that often with all the books that I write mm -hmm. that readers will go back and read a book again and mm -hmm. see a whole new layer they hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. So it must be the style of writing. It means you're a good writer. It means you're yeah. a good writer <laughs> and you know what you're doing and you and you fill your books with goodness. That's why we have to go back and read it twice so we yeah. get, make sure we get it fully. Right. But don't you think it's also whatever that person is going through at the time yes. and they sort mm -hmm. of interject into themselves into the story and see if they can solve some of their own problems through what the sure. character's solving and then if they come at another time when they don't have that same issue then it's like they're 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 finding other things that yeah. they didn't pay attention to before that's true okay yeah that's true i guess for me because i'm reading it during christmas time and yes mm -hmm. it just it has extra meaning you want to read it maybe read it again because it has a different meaning in there and they're all kind of happening at the same time yeah, swirling yeah. in there yeah I, I love that. What has the feedback been like for the audience? Because this was um, the highest rated, most yes. watched movie on Hallmark Movies we, and Mysteries. Yeah, and what has well. the, the feedback been for and you? And you know, I also heard that it was number four for that time slot on all networks. <gasps> wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. That's incredible. And there was a Seahawks game. Yeah, on a Sunday. And a, aired on a Sunday. And a, and a, and a Walking Sunday. Dead or Walking something. Dead, yeah. yeah. So four, we'll take yeah, it. Yeah, we'll take it. Oh, it's great. See, that's the thing. I say it's just all a movement. Hallmark Channel and Hallmark Channels. Oh, come on. It's a movement. And the Hardys yes. help. And the Hardys help, of course. Because it's saying these are the kinds of stories we, we see. need mm -hmm. to see. We yes. have difficult lives. We have a lot going on during the week. When we turn on the TV, we don't need to always be yes. <gasps> full of anxiety and try yes. to go to bed and sleep and wonder if the zombies are going to come. <laughs> we want to have right. the stories that tell us that it's going to be okay. Yeah. And that uh, there's possibility to move forward and relationships can improve. Those things are so essential for us as a culture. Yes. And we don't have enough of those stories. And what's wrong with the happy ending of once in a while? Not a thing. Right. It's, like, it's like somehow we got away from that. Like now we got to be realistic. Can't be happy endings all the time. But no, why? Sometimes it's good to have a happy ending. I want a happy ending. Because it's role modeling that it's possible. <laughs> right. right. Yes. 
So if we have more of those, maybe there will be more happy endings in real life. Maybe I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I think no, I actually think fun. that. I think you're onto something. I think you really seriously. Yes. We do are affected by what we see sometimes, mm -hmm. subconsciously yes. and consciously. Yes. You know, and I love seeing TV sometimes. We just, it just want to relax and see a good story, and yeah. just, and just yeah. like you know, you just want to be. We, we work hard. Feel we know good. How it's, right. feel good. Feel good. Mm -hmm. And and your the movie comfort. did that. Yes, comfort. And we did that. And the books do it too. We read these books. They do the same thing. They do that. They're mm -hmm. nice reads. It's like, come on, folks. We need Great. more of that. But Sequel. That's, that's what the, yeah. the feedback has been, as you asked. Yeah. That there was such a sense that, I mean, I've seen it already with how many readers who just discovered these books then mm -hmm. want, well, what else have you written? Where can I get your books? Yes. Lots mm -hmm. and lots of emails of these are the kinds of stories I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. And so that it really generates a whole lot more of an interest to have those stories made into movies because the readership is there. You know how it's kind of, we have to see the numbers mm -hmm, yeah. all the way across the board to get that. So I'm, I'm thrilled with what you do because it gets people reading. Yeah. And let's, yeah. let's get those readers yes. and they start to tick the numbers up on yeah. the interest. Because I, mean, I, I come from I come from a family of readers. We all, my mm -hmm. parents read, my brothers, says we all read, my grandkids read, we all, my daughter, we all read. read. She reads, I'm we read. Biggest yeah. bookworm ever. Yeah, I wanted to be a lip major, actually. Oh. So, like, I love reading, obviously. It's, you know, stories that are, you know, just resonate with you yeah. um, are the, the best ones to read. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think these books are so relatable. Yes. No matter, like, who mm -hmm. you are, what age or what gender you are, they're, that, that sense of family and community is relatable yeah. to everybody. I yeah. agree. I totally agree. And they cross, they cross you know, color and gender. It's just, it's just, they're just great books. Mm hmm about family and community, and I'm a person, you, I call everybody my village, and you're part of my village. So. All right. They're part of my village. It's the, it's the village. <laughs> I love it. Well, we've been talking for over an hour. This is great. I mean, you, <laughs> I can talk, we can talk to you forever. This is like, this is like, so fun. this has you. been, this has oh, been a pleasure for us, especially. Yeah. I can speak for both. We just, this is something she worked on, and, and, and you're here. We love that. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank the, you for coming yeah. in. The books are Fighting Father Christmas, Engaging Father Christmas, How My Book Became a Movie. Yeah. So she's on the books too. There are all the books there. Oh, That's for a lit world. Um, and of course, the movie. I, I think I'm gonna, I think put it on DVD. You think or stream uh, or whatever. Yeah. yeah oh, so yeah. Fighting Father Christmas. Not on DVD already. I know. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> nice. it's not out. Yeah. I mean, are they gonna, are they gonna show it again during Christmas time? Or oh no? yeah, they've already showed it like ten times. Ten times. Right. Okay. I okay. think it's me. airing okay. a oh, total of twenty times. Wow. Yes. Okay. And on Christmas Day, I heard. I haven't checked that. So you guys Christmas Day, well, then, yeah. Yeah. You know, then you can, you can yeah. watch that. Yes, of course. Thanks for being on the show. If anybody wants to mm -hmm. talk to you or see you or do anything yes. online, tell that camera where they can uh, reach you online. Please come visit me at robingun.com. That's my website. And then you can link into uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and whatever <laughs> yes, else. Yes, yes. What, what have I left out? Well, yeah, look, you and, got it. You got um, it. Yes. And um, I, I would just... I would just like to say thank you because I know a lot of you listening and watching are readers and you bring so much to what those of us who are artists with words, what we bring to the craft. We listen to you when you write to us and when you tell us what you like or what you want to see more of, we pay attention and I'm really grateful for your input. And to the Hardys, shout out. Hey, Hardys. Hardys. Oh, my God, Hardys. Lawrence. Oh, thank you. Uh, Marissa, yeah. tell people where they can find you. I'm you can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. Of course, Book Circle Online, we're on. We can go to BookCircleOnline.com. You can go to Book Circle Online on YouTube and iTunes. You can find this interview will be on there. You can find it there. Uh, of course, on Twitter, we're at Book Circle On. That's where we're at, Book Circle On. And of course, you can follow me at James Live Jr. on all social media platforms, which I'll have this interview on there too, of course. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. From managing editor Jason Squamata, executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, and Kevin Undergaro, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Book Circle Online. For more discussion, go to bookcircleonline.com. And if you have comments, questions, or book title suggestions, write us at info at bookcircleonline.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this is Book Circle Online. BCO, join the circle. Is, is producing now in all over the world literature and films that are coming 
from the heart language of the people in that community instead of taking all the books in English and just translating them. So that's why I'm really passionate about it. I just feel like you're elevate also that culture. You're giving hope too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. so is Lit World. You guys are giving hope to people yes. who may be in some remo remote village somewhere who they're good writers thinking, well, how do I get this out to anybody? How's going to see it? That's what it's amazing. It's, I agree with Marissa. It's, it's amazing stuff. Um, yeah. and before we get into the books a little bit, we want to talk about a little bit about you. Okay. And something comes up that I'm a professional organizer by trade. So there's something that, that both Marissa and I both caught that we want to bring up with you that I think is very interesting is that when you first started writing, mm -hmm. when people say, I don't have time to write. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I would love to do it, but I just don't know when I can, like, when can I write? What do you say to them? <laughs> well... I started writing when we had two young children at home mm -hmm. and there was no time. And I actually read a book by C.S. Lewis called Letters to an American Lady. And she said, how do you get all this personal correspondence done with teaching and writing? And he said something like, um, I rise while it is still dark. I love the still dewy cobwebbed hours of the morning. I make a proper pot of tea and answer all my correspondence before breakfast. And I thought, if it worked for C.S. Lewis, I'm going to get up early. And so that's what I started doing. I, I yeah. set the alarm three days a week for 3 o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. did that consistently for 15 years. And I'm telling you, from 3 in the morning until 7 mm -hmm. in the morning, nobody called. Nobody wanted right. breakfast. Mm -hmm. right. was up. And all those creative ideas could just flow. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got the work done. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think that just goes with good time management and like yes. actually dedicating your time and getting into that rhythm of just constantly practicing your craft. I right. love that. And I love how you bring up C.S. Lewis. Lewis, he's one of my favorite. Mine too. Yeah. Well, mine too. Well, mine also. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. Well, and too. we know, like, he's really big on Christian values. And yes, I yes. noticed he was also referenced in your books here mm -hmm. while we were reading them. And I'm like, I loved how you tied his work into yours. Well, the Father Christmas. I love how Lewis had the Father Christmas in mm -hmm. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes. 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 Because yes. here comes Father Christmas, and he gives good gifts to these children and it's not because they deserve them it was grace it was a gift and i love that concept of a father christmas giving gifts like that rather than the western santa claus yeah. that we have you can be good naughty or nice or and mm. and that it's such a uh, performance based whether or not you mm. get a gift whereas this this british version of father christmas was mm. here's a gift but there is a purpose to that gift. You are going to be able to use that gift later on to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's Me why too. we're blessed so we can bless others. So if we yes. are given a gift yes. of any sort, mm -hmm. physical or a, an ability or a gift, it's so that we can give it back to others. Mm -hmm. That's why we... So that's why the books are Father Christmas. It's not Finding Santa yes. Claus. It's yeah. Finding Father... It's yeah. that understanding of all the good gifts that God's given to us and that that picture that Lewis had with that Father Christmas well, I figured mm -hmm. I, I kind of went with the Father as in our Father I went, I went that far good so that's how good. you know okay, well, yeah. okay. That's, that's, that's I, I, I like that you know? that's where I went it's a, it's it's a, a lot Christmas of it's a, it. yeah there was yeah. in his books because that's it's kind a of Christmas story but that's the whole story of Christmas mm -hmm. right we always we forget about that, don't there. we? Hello, people. We forget about that. Come on. <laughs> like, hello. It's not the Hallmark cards. You know, we love Hallmark Channel on the cards, but it's about fa our father. Yes. And so I, I saw the symbolism kind of. That's where, that's where I went. So I guess yeah. I did fine with that. I like that. Um, but I just have to, just to ask, as a regular human level, because this isn't always easy, when you first started getting up at 3 a.m., how was it? Um, not too bad, because I really am an early riser. Okay. But I'm telling you, I when I read that Lewis had made a pop. He, uh, he said it something like, I make a proper pot of tea. Yeah. Well, um, I went, I seriously, I went and bought a teapot. Okay. A very cute little teapot. And so I wake up and go, oh, my alarm went off. Oh, I'm going to make a pot of tea. <laughs> and I still really love tea. But that was it. Yeah. I would have just this sort of ceremony of yeah. get up, go downstairs, make the tea. And yeah. then I can get started. Yes, I love it. Um, now, so, okay, so, and also you talk about something that's very popular in our field of work, fields of work, rejection. Oh, yes. yes. And you said, <laughs> we read somewhere, you had like... But you had 10 rejections yeah. for the For the first very first book I wrote, <coughs> yeah. The first Christy Miller book yeah. was turned down 10 times and over a two-year period of time. No. But I knew that there were no. teenage girls that were waiting to get this book, so that... Yeah kept me going. What was it about, you know, the earlier revisions of your book that kept getting rejected? Mm, good question. 
That is a good question. It was not so much the book itself. It was that when that first teen book came out. So see, this was t over 20 years ago yeah. when the first book, the first novel I wrote came out over 20 years ago. And it was that uh, a book for teens 20 years ago seemed to the publishers like something that was not a full enough market to take a risk on a brand new writer. Interesting. Mm. So a lot of people trying to break into music or write, it's that the, the, the studio, the publisher, has to make, take a risk on you. Yeah. And yeah. so that was it, and they just didn't see a market. They didn't see that there w wow. they could sell it into the bookstores. And so the, the publisher that did take that chance, then it just opened, and the next book, and the next book, and the, the whole Christy Miller series yeah. has sold over Four million oh, yeah. copies oh, yeah. in several languages. Yeah. So it was just this steady rolling out and get up, do the work, yeah. and that's it. With dreams, with goals, we all give up too easily. Yes, we Very think, true. oh, it's just yeah. it didn't happen for me. Right. Well, get up, shut right. up, work. go back to work. <laughs> Come on, baby. Get up I love it. You feel no, that seriously, way yeah, yeah, you because do. if it really is a passion, then it's not going to go away, and you'll be. Mm. 90 years old and going oh, I was always going to write a book mm -hmm. well yeah right you could have right you, could you have. still could you still yeah, could right. but you probably have more brain cells back then <laughs> that you could really take advantage of so but also yeah, did your sure. faith play a place, right. in, uh, place in this too of that oh, after gosh. rejection you're like okay god I'm just gonna leave it into your hands mm -hmm, I believe absolutely. in this series I believe in these books I'm gonna keep going yeah. that was part of it too yeah yeah and there was just this sense that this was something I couldn't step away from because it, it would it would always be there that I hadn't tried the next knock on the next door. Yeah. Try the next. Yeah. Just keep going. Did so, you have any yeah. influences in creating those first books? Because it was essentially your first, you know, breaking into that certain demographic. But did you have any other influences to write those? Oh, yeah. Because my husband was a youth pastor for okay. 25 years. And we worked with these youth groups. And so we'd have these times where we, on one particular camping trip with a bunch of kids in Southern California, we were at San Clemente State Beach okay. for a week. And these girls, 13-year-old girls, are all in their tent reading books instead of out at the beach. And I went in the tent. Come on, there's sun and surf and sand and yeah, boys out there. What are right, you doing yeah. in the tent? And they had a stack of books from the library, and they said, we want to just read about the sun and surf and sand. Oh, and they wanted to stay in their tent. And so I read some of the books with them, and I said, oh, these are just way too evocative for your 13-year-old oh, heart. wow, okay. Does your mother know this is what you're reading? Like, there's some information in there that oh, you really? shouldn't be it's absorbing. And so then as a result of that, the girls challenged me. And so why don't you write books for us? And at that time, I'd written some articles and some children's books. Yeah. And I said, oh, a whole novel, all those words. <laughs> all those words. I think all those words. I don't think I can do that. Yeah. And they said, how about if we help you? We'll tell you what to write. How hard could that be? Wow. Oh, wow. And that's how it started. So for those two years, when I had those rejections, those two years, I would meet with the girls every week and I would read to them what I had written. And you guys, I stood there like this, shaking with the papers. As I would read what I had written and they would just roll their eyes and say, oh, we would never say it that way. And they oh, told me everything wow. that was wrong. So it was like a focus group yeah. without realizing it. Yeah. So then yeah. the girls would tell me, they'd change the names of the characters, they'd tell me how they would dress or say things or what should happen. And so I'd get up at three the next morning That's and amazing. I'd rewrite and rewrite. So that was the influence. Wow. You actually were in that mentality for your characters. I, I mean, that. have a yeah. bunch of 13 year old girls tell you what they think of your writing and yeah, sure. it'll They'll change your it life. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I have 11 year old granddaughter and she tells uh -huh. me things all the time. Exactly. You know <laughs> what I'm I know, saying? I do. I do know what I mean. That's, that's, that's a great story. You do really mm have -hmm. a focus group, basically. Your target audience was telling you what to, literally telling right. you what to write and how to write it. Yeah. That's divine intervention. It, it really, yeah. it makes you see that even though you want to write for yourself mm -hmm, or what course, you think is interesting, course. if you want to sell it, you have to write for the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's another good tip for writers, too. Like, mm -hmm. get someone other than your best friend to read it. Yeah. And um, take that feedback seriously so that you can have thick skin and keep going. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yes, we know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So your father, Christmas Novella, has both won two Reader's Choice Awards. Congratulations. Yes. 
And of course, every season they come out and they're really good. And I also just want to say to folks like, because we just came from a big Hardy's convention. Yes. <laughs> Wank family, the family, Hardy's family reunion too. Yes. Um, and you're a Hardy. I am a Hardy. Yay. I'm proud to be a so Hardy. We're the same yes. family. We're all Hardy's same yes, family. Yes, that's right. Yes. And so what does the Hardy's love mean meant for you um, so far? How's it meant to you? Well, I have really appreciated how they are so supportive of each other on their Facebook. It's a closed group. Mm -hmm. And when I went in, I was a lurker for a long time. <laughs> you know, just kind of watching these yes. conversations roll out. And then when it finally felt like, well, I asked one of the administrators, can I say something that Aaron is going to be in a movie based yeah. on my book? And she said, are you kidding? <laughs> They're going to just go nuts. Yes. And that's what it felt like, that I could start leaking some of the information. And I, yeah. when I was on set and I took some um, pictures and yes. video clips so I could start posting them on, on Hardee's and yeah. they loved it. Oh it was fun. So then it really got some clips. Right. Yeah, this was and it felt well, like so we was. were really all enjoying the same experience yeah. together. Then that was fun. Well, we just learned that ourselves. Well, yes, the it's, it's such a community, mm -hmm. and yes. not to steal your words, James, but you said it's a movement. It is. It, it's incredible to have so many people with the same like-mindedness mm -hmm. and so helping support each other in a very healthy way. Oh my God! Very Especially healthy. in oh yeah. like we're in an industry where we can be easily tainted yes. and yes. think otherwise and, and get overwhelmed yes. and stuff. But to have like such a community to go to that truly supports each other mm -hmm. is rare. I agree, and I, I, I said I, I stood up. I did these testimonials, and I, I did one because they were there for me through a hard oh. rough time this year, a few months ago. Um, and they, I said, it's, it's not just a show, it's just a movement because yeah. they do support other things that go, I mean, they'll support, I have a blog, they support my business, mm -hmm. they support things that we do, some of our other shows that we do, Marissa and I do, we do a lot of stuff here, they'll, they'll tweet our other shows out, if I recommend a book, they'll That's recommend, right. I mean, they, they completely, they're there, and we got to see firsthand 520 some odd Hardys wow. in one room wow. staring at us. It was just like, it was amazing. And I just think anybody in the orbit gets gets to have that. Well, and I saw a little video clip of that that was taken from the stage, either Lori or Aaron mm -hmm. had taken it, and I saw Jeanette Oak in the front row. And what a gift to be able to have the author of the original books be there I mean, I got chicken skin thinking okay. about okay. it for her. I, to... It's all about you right now, but I just want to say really quick, she She's is amazing, first amazing. of all. And she, we had her on our show yes. through Skype. Yes. She came on our show, her said, fantastic. I can just her talk all day long. Yes. And then we got to see her there and big hug and we yes. talked to her. And I asked her to adopt me. <laughs> I said, sure, 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 I'll stop you. Um, and, Does that uh, mean you have to move to Canada I'm like, now? <laughs> sure, okay, bye. See you guys later, sir. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys later. It's clean up there. It's very clean. Um, but notice that she is, and yeah, to have her there, um, she's sharp, she's smart, she has mm -hmm. wisdom, and just I mean, she's an amazing person. Just being around her, it's like, like it's almost like going to church. Like, just listen to her talk. It was amazing. Do you know, when I first was published, she wrote me a little personal note on her personal stationery oh congratulating me because we were both interviewed by the same magazine okay. and she said something about congratulations and I saved that because Classy. I thought Aww. she really went out of her way yeah. to do that she didn't have to do that no that's classy it is it's so classy it is because you know, again in our business right of that have you read her work any of her oh stuff? yes you know? oh yes, yes. Okay. and her her books started coming out the about the same time. Well, I think a little bit before okay. the Christy Miller books yeah. did. And those were the books I was buying for the girls in our youth group okay. to read. Oh, and cool. they were saying, well, those are older characters. We want oh, teenagers. Yes, they are. Yes. So that's it. So then. Yeah, she was a young woman by then. Full circle in a way. It's it full is circle. full circle. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love it. So let's talk about the book. Let's get in okay. there. Yeah. Let's, let's get in there. Where should we start, Marissa, and put the book? Well, Finding Father Christmas. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I love the character of Miranda because mm. it. I'm always about stories about self discovery mm -hmm. and the fact that, yes, she is a protagonist woman. I, I do have to throw that out, but that she's trying to find herself and finding answers in a world where she's sadly alone. Yes. And I love like just the journey that she goes on and the people that she meets and ultimately do become her family. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just it's literal, it's a like beautiful, literally. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful story. It really mm -hmm. is. Because it, it really tugs at the heartstrings, that the belonging. We all want to belong and to be welcomed in. Mm -hmm. And to see that played out for her, just. Yeah. But also the thing for me with this book, too, just piggybacking off for her, is that Miranda, is her search is kind of noble. She's looking for, looking, well, looking for father, Christmas, so to speak, looking for father. 
but also how it affects the world, how the world's small, and how mm. what you do can affect someone else. And wow. so I, that's what I got. People know who like watch my shows. I'm always into deep meanings of stuff. Yeah. Um, and to me, what I got of it was her search was kind of noble. It's just my, I want to find my father. I've had so much loss. I'm alone. But then by doing that, there's this family back there has their own life, has their own. I'm so excited. We're bringing someone who's so good. She's a great authoress. And the movie that it's based on, she wrote the books. We're talking to Robin Jones Gunn next. This is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. <laughs> Hello, you guys. Welcome to Book Circle Online. I am one of your hosts, James Lodge Jr. I'm so glad to see you guys joined us today. We have a great author for you today. But first, my co-host, my girl, my fellow Hardy. Marissa Serafini. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes, I am Marissa. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. That's right, Serafini <laughs> TV. That's where you can follow her at. Yes. We're so excited to have this guest because if any of you guys watched the movie Finding Father Christmas, which was the highest rated, most watched movie on Hallmark Mystery Movie Channels. Did I say it right? Did I say it right? <laughs> Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Mysteries and Mysteries. Yeah. I, so I knew close. my team. It was so close. so close. But I mean, either way, very good stuff. So good. And these books that they come from are really, really good. And they're really great reads. The books are Finding Father Christmas and Engaging Father Christmas. And is there more Father Christmases coming after that? <laughs> yes. Okay, oh, very excited about all that. Geez. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Robin Jones Gunn. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's all your audience in here. Everybody down, down, down. <laughs> She's a regular person. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Marissa and I are very happy to have you here. We're so excited to have yes, you here. Yes, I, I was, because obviously we follow Hallmark. We're, yes. we're big yes. fans of Hallmark. Yes. And I knew about this movie when they were filming it back in June yep. of 2016. Yeah, about To it, put yeah. a time stamp on this show. But, like, I knew that it was based on your book. And I'm like, okay, we have to get her in. Mm -hmm. So this has been mm -hmm. a long time coming. So I'm yep. so glad yeah, you're yes. here today. Yes. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I'm <laughs> pleased to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Yes, of Very course. Nice. Now, I mean, now you wrote these books, uh, you know, a while back, and now they were made, one was made into a movie. Mm -hmm. So basically, I mean, it, it seems like the movie was a combination of the books. First two. <laughs> first two? <laughs> yes, and this is what happened. I wrote the first book 11 years ago. Wow. And so many readers were sending me emails, this would make a great Hallmark movie. So I talked to my agent and she said, oh, it's so hard and there's just so many people that want their book to be made yes. into a Hallmark movie and I'm sure. we'll see what happens. So five years ago, a Hallmark producer contacted my agent and said, do you have any Christmas books what? that we can make into a movie? She goes, oh yes, I do. Yeah. In the meantime, I had written the second one, mm -hmm. Engaging Father Christmas. Yeah. And so when the producer from Hallmark read the first one, they said, oh, we need more of a love story. And my agent said, oh, Engaging Father Christmas, mm. you need to read this and combine the stories. Yeah. So then it took five years from the time that wow. they started the conversations to it actually coming on air. Wow. That was a happy day when well, that all I'm happened. I'm sure, you could breathe too. Oh. Sure. Yeah, yeah, because you know, I was reading the first book, Finding Father mm -hmm. Christmas, and I realized mm -hmm. there really wasn't a love interest in the first no. one. Right. No. And to be a Hallmark movie, you kind of have to have a <gasps> love yes. interest. There's True. always the pair. I'm like, uh, so I completely understood why yeah. it covered both of those books. Instead it of made sense. One. It completely made sense now, because Hallmark has, their, has a formula um, but with your book and with the movie, it was just so it was so good. First of all, the movie was really good. The books are really nice. engaging. Um, the books they're not they're not a lot of pages, so it's good. You can read them. You can go on a plane. You can be at the beach. I read I, I, the first book on a plane to Vancouver, yeah. and I read the second book on the way exactly. back. Nice. I did. So I'm saying for Very folks good. out there, it's it's great. It's great quick reading. It's such it's so it's so good. So because things keep happening to you, just want to find what happens next, and this happens next, and then she does this. It's like you want to know what's going on. Yeah. It's so it's That so means exciting. I did my job, right? You did your job. As a writer, <laughs> yeah. you did your job, yeah. exactly. Um, and she also has this little segue, how my book became a movie. And this is something, because uh, we're going to talk a little more about that later on in the show, just how this actually works. She gave you a little piece just now, how it works. It's five years in the making. Yeah. But this is a great little book. It's out for people who are wanting, who have something, have something out there you want to maybe get produced. It shows you how, how she went, what she went through. Different for everybody, yeah. Different for everybody. And all the proceeds go to? To Lit World, which is training for writers who live in difficult places in the world where wow. they can't get the training or the schooling. Yeah. And it's a an organization that's very dear to my heart. And I've gone around oh, the world good. and done training at the Lit World conferences. Wow. And those writers are so talented, but they need that scholarship to be able to get there and yeah. get that training. And 
Yeah. That's so admirable yeah. because yeah. not a lot of people do that. No. Because people are just trying to figure out how to either make a movie or just make a book and, and get that published. Mm -hmm. So to have that knowledge and out into the world. Yeah, but look bowl. at look at what we ha we have so yeah. much. And yeah. what if what if you had all the talent you had, but you lived in a place where it was difficult to get the kind of job that would mm -hmm. use those skills? Mm -hmm. So to be able to get the training to be able to develop and use those skills in places that are really difficult to break in. Stuff going on, they don't know all. I mean, you could be really affecting them mm -hmm. too. And she goes and she meets them, and she they like it's just it's just so many layers to the story mm -hmm. that I got out of it that I thought. And she is the like I said protagonist. She's the one who's the catalyst. She's the one who's doing this because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's her journey but it's not just her journey yeah well and when both Aaron and Wendy when we were on set and met them they said when I saw the script I wanted to do this because there's the intrigue and the layers and mm -hmm. that's fun for the Hallmark Movies and Mystery Channel yeah. because they like the mystery yes it's yeah. a very so much a mystery, gave, very much a mystery. Mm -hmm. the movie was it very much a mystery it like you could figure it out right no. within the first no. five minutes no. what's going to happen what's going to happen what's going to happen so I was really grateful that they used all those elements from mm -hmm. the book because so much else changed yeah. for, which yeah. it always does yeah. yeah my husband was going to buy me a, a sweatshirt that says don't judge my book by its movie okay. but <laughs> but then the movie came out and it was like it's good. i really don't have it's, a problem it's, 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 it's all good. give me the sweatshirt right. but i'm not gonna wear it <laughs> but oftentimes it's so yes, different, so different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but the thing is it didn't really change anything it might have changed the order but the story is still the same at the end and I like that, mm -hmm. and I liked how there were some lines in the book given to some characters who were actually given to Now Matters characters yes. in, yeah. in the book. So, like, lines change, but it didn't change the story. Yeah. So. Yeah, parts were taken out, parts mm -hmm. were added, and it was... The book is set in England. Well, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> oh, you're getting yes. to that? <laughs> I'm going to ask you that, girl. Like okay, I said, I'll wait. <clears throat> no, but no, that's right now. As we get into that, I'm like, how did you feel when they try, decided to change the location? Because in some stories, like in this story, the location was a character. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was like it was another character in the book, mm -hmm. in the books. So they changed location. Even though the location wasn't like they went from England to Maui or something like that. I mean, it was still. <laughs> but the street names were the same. Yeah, street names were the same. Yeah, that's right. So, but how did you feel about that at first when they suggested it was going to be Vermont and not? I will tell Lundy. you. Tell me. Tell us. Tell us, girl. Tell <laughs> let us. Let me tell you. When I first had the conversations with the producer and they let me know when you get this, well, my agent told me when you get the contract, I think it was 30 some pages. You realize when you sign that, you're turning over okay. all control, all rights. And it took me a day where okay. I, I looked at the contract and I thought about it. And, you know, every book, when you're a writer, it's your baby. It's your baby. Mm -hmm. You gave birth to it. Yeah. And so then I, I, just, I just felt like just trust the, the people that you're working with are great. Just trust the process and let the story roll out and, and be its own new version of the same elements in the story. So I had to go to the bank and have the um, contract notarized so I could sign it in front of yeah. the notary public. And the woman at the bank, um, I, I was really shy, but I said, well, my book is being made into a Hallmark movie. And I had, Hallmark movie? <laughs> I love Hallmark movies. Yes. What's the book? And she's on her phone ordering the book. Wow. While we're so I'm like, I've got to sign my life away. <laughs> Isn't that, is that kind of yeah, like, ironic? Yeah. And I drove home and I felt really this mixture of nervous, what have I done? But then this excitement that mm. eclipsed that nervousness of. Who gets to do this? Who That's gets true. to have their book That's made true. into a movie? There are hundreds, maybe thousands of authors who have submitted or tried or their agents have. And to just, I just sort of sat in the privilege of that mm. sense of, I get to work with amazing people that do this for a living. They mm -hmm. know what they're doing and just let it go. So then after that, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Just do whatever yeah. you want to do to yeah. to make the story come together. And I was so pleased. I was so it still worked. It delighted. Still worked. Yeah. yeah. It still worked. So and then so many people have emailed me after saying, "Well, I love the movie, and I went and got the book, and I actually like a lot because you can yeah. put a lot more elements yeah, in the book." Yeah. And because there's a lot more about the true meaning of Christmas in the book. Yeah. And Miranda searching for her birth father and finding that her heavenly father's always been there for her. Yeah. And so that tender part that was not in the movie is in the book. And that's mm -hmm. 
So people are finding that as it like was more religious in the book double. than it was in the oh, movie. Absolutely. Obviously, it's oh. more in the book. It's more yeah. symbolism in there. Right. What I liked about what the book does mm-hmm. better than the movie, mm-hmm. I, I have to say, just reading it, I understood Miranda's backstory mm-hmm. a lot more because yes. Yes. Um, I didn't realize how disconnected she was from her mother. Mm-hmm. Like in the movie, it shows that Briefly, yeah, she kind of yeah. grew up with her mother, but when it, her mission was to find the, her father, but mm-hmm. like I didn't realize why she was so driven to find her father because her mother lied to her yeah. her mm-hmm. whole time. I'm like, oh, that's a big enough motivation to literally go to London and find your father. Another so, theme. Point. Yeah, off of really that, of her. Another-